I've made a little video here to help people get started with uh, revenue estimates, um, some forecasting um, for of a website for a website or maybe like an online shop. It's nothing fancy, but I hope it's enough to get somebody started. Um, a little disclaimer up front is I'm a product manager. I'm not a mathematician or a statistician. So there might be some flaws in what I'm doing here. If you do find some flaws, please let, please let me know. I would appreciate it. Um, just what I, what I did here is I generated some sample data here for 2008, which we're going to use as a, as a foundation um, to do the forecasts and the revenue forecast for 2000, the months of months of 2009. I did put in a little bit of a curve in here. Uh, you can probably see that dipping down in the summer months, uh, but I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to include seasonality in my forecasting, but um, I'm pretty sure you can figure it out yourself how to calculate that. What I have is registrations for the website, and then I have a column that lists how many of those registrations actually spend money. So um, that's the, to, to calculate the conversion. What I did is I took the average of uh, the registrations over the month, so I have an average per month of uh, re new registrations. Um, I did the same thing for column E, where I calculated uh, the new user, the average of new users with purchases, and then based on those two values, I calculated the conversion rate. So what we'll do is we're just going to paste uh, this value in these cells here. Um, do that. And then to make this more dynamic, I'm actually going to recalculate um, this uh, users with purchases, this average here. So it turns out 115, just up, uh, just like up here. But if uh, with doing this, I can actually change this number later here, this conversion rate, and um, change change the the projections a bit. And maybe you're you're hoping to get uh, a little bit of an uplift in the conversion rates next year or over that next period. Um, I'll show you. I'll show that later. Um, just gonna drag this down here. Okay, so pretty linear projection. Next thing, what do we want to do is we're gonna get some revenue numbers against these. So um, on my second tab here, what I did is I uh, did generate some random customer data, the name here, and then the revenue from each of those customers. Um, and th this is data from 2008. Uh, which we're going to apply to do our forecasting for 2009. Now, w w you could probably take um, column C and calculate an average of, of these revenues, these numbers here, and then apply that to the forecast. Um, it might work in some cases, but in most cases, uh, you're probably going to have some outliers. Uh, in this case, we have a customer here, for example, that spent a lot more money than uh, these other customers over here. Um, I generated this rev um, this data here, so um, this is probably not what your data is going to look like, but uh, here's another outlier, here's another outlier, just to kind of demonstrate that. Um, to address that, what I did is I uh, created a distribution, uh, a frequency distribution table, and I will show you this here in this, uh, this other spreadsheet I kind of pre-prepared. It's right here. What we have is we have uh, the ranges, um, the, the frequency, the percentage and uh, the average of each of these ranges. Uh, here's an example. This this middle range here is uh, $412 to $515, and there is uh, 10 customers that fit into that range, which is 20% of all of the customers. And then over here, what I did is I took the the average of these two values to calculate um, the average of the range, which is not really the average of the range at, in this case, but um, Maybe in your data, what you want to do is actually calculate the average for the entire range. Um, just play with it, see what, what works best for you. Up here, what I did is I actually took the, the actual average of that range because it's only three values. Um, so pretty straightforward. You can do this in Excel. It might take a little bit, a little bit of a time. There are some uh, statistics programs that uh, will do this for you. One of those is SPSS, but I'm sure there's others out there as well. So um, I took this table here and moved it over in my other spreadsheet, um, which I'm just going to grab that data from my other spreadsheet where I already calculated it, so we don't have to redo that. Okay, here we go. So uh, let me move the camera over here. 
kind of show what I did over here. I moved the table, that distribution table, from the other tab into this tab here. Um, still have the ranges. It's formatted a little bit different, uh, differently here, the ranges. And then I have the percentages of customers in that range. Um, and then that, uh, that, that value, that average um, revenue value for each of those ranges. Uh, we're going to actually use that to do the projections for 2009. Uh, of course, the assumption here is being that uh, those ranges don't change in 2009, but it's, a, it's an estimate, it's a forecast, it's not 100% uh, guaranteed. So I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, the first, first column here. So 115 times the six percent so that's gonna get us um, it's not a dollar value in this case so seven customers are gonna fall into this range that's the estimate here at six percent so um, so and that times the revenue the average revenue there we go so that's uh, eighty one thousand dollars change that back so to make this a little bit, uh, make this format so we can drag it. I'm going to do this. Now, if you be able to just drag this down, it's fine. And then drag this over. So w what we did is here just, it's pretty simple. We just calculated. We we just calculated our projections for each of these ranges. Um, over here, um, you got to make sure that when you drag these formulas, formulas, that you don't make mistakes because you can end up with some really weird values. Um, and that's the that's a good case. In some cases, you might not even notice you made a mistake and skew everything you just did. Um, and so, w what we'll do is we'll sum that up, and then we already have our projections uh, for that specific month. And there we go. It's gonna drag the camera window over here. Now we just fill that down and we have our uh, estimates for the months of 2009. In 2009, um, of course it's linear because we don't have any sort of growth in there. Um, but um, here, here, this is what I meant uh, earlier by being able to change this conversion uh, rate. Let's say we change that to 20%. We can see our uh, values change here. Uh, we can change it to 50% if we think uh, we're, you know we're gonna increase by 50%. Um, it's gonna I did undid that and did some undos. Let's put a little bit of a growth in there just to sh show what it what what it could look like. Let's say it's a 1% growth month over month, which is not bad. Now we could just apply that. Now it's gonna get a little bit messy. Not the prettiest way to do it, meaning that ooh, we'd make a thousand dollars, eleven hundred dollars more. There we go. Should be able to drag that down, and uh, we'd have a little bit of a um, an increase. You could do the same thing for the seasonality. If you were to calculate the um, the, the percentage of change here from the maximum value in this column here, and then you could apply that the percentage here to kind of get the seasonality effect going. But um, this should do the trick. I should get people started. Um, to do some estimates, feel free to send me a message. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to share the spreadsheet with anybody. Um, not rocket science, not difficult. Just uh, make sure you do some reading. Uh, and good luck.